I invite you to stand as you are able as we sing our gathering song. We'll be singing verses 1 through 4, and this is also our sending song this morning, verses 5 through 7. But this morning, we'll be singing verses 1 through 4. Oh, praise the gracious power.
hearts together as we pray together the prayer of the day. O oh God, powerful and compassionate, you shepherd your people, faithfully feeding and protecting us. Heal each of us and make us humble people, that we may embody the justice and peace of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We now our special music will require precious spirit breath of peace.
Thank you very much. Um, that was a, a wonderfully beautiful song, and thank you for the extra music. <coughs> Sounds great. <coughs> uh, the song we're going to sing is, it was actually introduced last week by the praise team, and everyone sang the chorus, and so today we're just going to jump right in here and sing this. Um, this is kind of our theme song. It helps prepare our hearts and minds for our scripture for today. And so uh, let us sing together, uh, uh, No Longer Strangers. <laughs> Beginning at verse 30. 
The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. Jesus said to them, Come away to a deserted place, all by yourselves, and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in a boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many of them saw them going and recognized them. And they hurried there on foot from all towns and arrived ahead of them. And when Jesus went ashore, he saw a great crowd and had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And when they had crossed over, they came to the land of Genesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized Jesus, and they rushed about the whole region and began to bring the sick of mats to wherever they heard that Jesus was. And whenever Jesus went into the villages or towns or town farms, they let uh, the sick in marketplaces and begged Jesus that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Um, I just want to say something before I even get to the sermon part, but because we set our hearts and minds, I think it's, it's, uh, it's a very rare occasion that uh, God and the Holy Spirit and myself finish my sermon Thursday morning before noon. <laughs> I say that because whatever you might have heard Thursday evening is not part of what this sermon is. You may think that it is. And I can't help you from thinking that, but this was written before then. <laughs> I just want you to know. So let us set in our hearts and minds as we prepare to hear God's word for today. Hallelujah, Lord, for the of Jesus. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Guess what? They decided there's nothing there to fight for anymore. 
He told me that. And I said, there's some truth in that. But while he was there, he met with this wonderful woman named Milan, and they got married. Well, the problem was is that he's back now in California, and they tried, and it took uh, probably a couple years to get her to illegally come to this country. And she did. She had a brother, and I forgot the brother's name, but uh, her brother was still back in Vietnam and his family. And you know what was? <clears throat> he was very smart, very educated, and according to most people around, he was also very rich. He was connected with one of the major newspapers in southern Vietnam. And he knew what was going on. He knew what was happening. So very smartly, he put all of his money, currency and everything, into gold. And he was able to get on a plane with his family and fly to California before the whole country collapsed. As I was visiting with them, uh, this was been 74, 75, somewhere in there, I would go to their house often because they, oh, they had the best Vietnamese food anywhere. It's just wonderful. And I just loved going there. Honestly, it was like going to a whole other country. As soon as I walked in, they almost pushed me into a chair, took my shoes off, put slippers on me. And of course, according to their tradition at the times, all the women were in the kitchen and all the men sat at the table. But it was just a wonderful atmosphere. Well, lo and behold, what happens is, is that Juan's brother was very well connected to a whole lot of people. And I'm sure that some of you might remember that some of these people were called boat people. Remember that? They got in whatever boat they could to get out and to get away from the violence that they thought was going to occur. And maybe some of you remember this. And Chris, if you can put the picture up there now. Anybody remember this? Does anybody know what it was? This is, uh, I'll just have to read this here. From April to October 1975, 50,000 refugees from Vietnam and other South and Eastern Asian countries were living, does anybody know where it was? Camp Pendleton. Camp Pendleton. I just get this notion that we got more history. <laughs> you know, um, this is just really interesting because one time, Lon, his brother was going to go down there. And I don't know how I did it, but I said, can I go, can I go, can I go? Yes. And I said, he says, well, I'll get you in. And of course, he just goes in. He's got his little press and I use and he flashes his brown and everything. They just let us all in. And I got the opportunity to walk around to these people that they might have had a whole bunch before, but they didn't have a whole bunch now. But they had one thing in common. They had one thing that was deeply in the midst of them, and that was hope. They knew nothing about what was going to happen, but they knew that it was going to be better from where they came from. Within 24 hours notice, listen to the welcome here, within 24 hours notice, the Marines and civilians set up over 1,000 tents, tents in Camp Pendleton. They set up temporary housing tents, uh, uh, Quonset huts, and the deal was is that they needed to have sponsor families. The number one church that was involved with sponsoring families was the Lutheran Church. I don't know about you, but at that time, our, our pastor that was in Monterey Park there, uh, they adopted a Vietnamese little girl. And churches were adopting families. That was the whole deal then. But you know what? As I went back and I read the history a little bit farther, only 30% of the people living in the United States at that time supported this idea. Meaning 70% of the people living in the United States were against this. And it took a presidential pact. President Gerald Ford signed the Indochina Migration and Refugee Act of 1975, which granted the refugees special status to enter the country and established a domestic resettlement program. A bold president who said, we are going to do this. Knowing that 70% of the people living in this country at that time did not want that to happen. 
and it did. And for seven months, all those 50,000 people lived there. And probably within a year, those tents were no longer there. Why was that? Because they're now living across the country. They're now part of the fabric of society. And I just love that story because there was a time in our history that guess what? We opened the doors wide and we did that. <clears throat> it's interesting through all the articles that I read this last week, um, Lutheran social services is mentioned in more than one time and time again. The Lutherans were the ones that were helping in so many different ways. And there's a large group of Hmong people living in Minnesota. I want to show you a clip because it's one of my favorite clips of movies. If you remember, if you ever saw the movie Gran Torino, oh, yeah. ever saw? Yeah. yeah. Clint Eastwood yeah. Oh, plays right. Walt Kowalski, yeah. a real good Polish name. Yes. Uh, watch the clip and try to listen carefully to what he says at the end. <laughs> Try to get yourself a show. I thought your Asian girls were supposed to be smart. I don't know how to make a little like that so fast for a kitchen. You know, bitch, you I know, I know. Take it easy. Now, yeah, what about that goofball guy over there? Is that a danger or something? Yeah, kind of. His name is Trey. Yeah, we well, shouldn't be hanging out with him. We should be hanging out with your own people. The other come on. You mean home? Yeah. Home. Not home. What the hell is it? Oh, well, I mean, oh, wow. Wow. You're so late, you know that? No, I'm going to say this is a people. I'm going to look at the big parts of us carrying the Well, how did you end up in my neighborhood? Why did you stay there? It's the anomaly. We thought I'd be a sign. And when we ran into it, it happened so many people all along. So many people were here.
because we have not welcomed them. Or they've gone to places and they have not been welcomed. So the question is, is how do we treat each other? How do we treat each other? It's interesting, as I looked at the treatment of aliens in the Bible, and that word is both in the New Testament and Old Testament, it's right there. It means stranger. The word alien in the Bible means a foreigner who lives in a place without the right of citizenship. Aliens in the Bible. Abraham was an alien. Joseph and his brothers were aliens. Mary, Joseph, and Jesus were aliens when they went down to Egypt. Aliens. How do we treat each other? Let us read from Leviticus. And unfortunately, there's other verses of Leviticus that people like to bring up all the time, but they kind of forget this one sometimes. Leviticus 19, verses 33, 34. <clears throat> when an alien resides with you in your land, you shall not oppress the alien. The alien who resides with you shall be to you as the citizens among you. You shall love the alien as yourself, for you were aliens in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. How do we treat each other? Words matter. I want to thank Jim Hassel for sharing this with me because I forgot, again, part of this history there. We just kind of forget, but um, I just want to read part of what Robert Kennedy said the day after Martin Luther King was shot and killed in 1968. Seems like so long ago, and it hasn't been that long. I changed some of the words so that it's more appropriate for us this morning, but this is what Robert Kennedy said the day after Martin Luther King was shot. He said, this is the breaking of one's spirit. By denying them a chance to stand as a parent and as a person among other persons. And this too affects us all. I'm not come here to propose a certain set of specific remedies, nor is there a single set. For a broad and adequate outline, we know what must be done. When you teach someone to hate and fear the other, when you teach that they are a lesser person because of the color or their beliefs or the policies they pursue, when you teach those different from you that they threaten your freedom or your job or your family, then you also learn to confront others not as fellow citizens, but as enemies. To be met not with cooperation, but with conquest. To be subjugated and mastered. We learn at the last to look at our siblings as aliens, people with whom we share a city but not a community, people bound to us in a common dwelling but not in a com uh, <clears throat> common effort. We learn to share only a common fear, only a common desire to retreat from each other, only a common impulse to meet disagreement with force. For this all, oh, there are no final answers. Once you were, once we all were, once still happens today when people are on the outside looking in, and people call them names and point and treat them as the other instead of as a human being standing there in the presence of God and in the presence of us. But now, to say, well, once this is here, but now. But now, God is the one who brings us together. Some of it is our doing, but God is the one who does it because Paul says, Jesus is the peace that passes all human understanding. Jesus is the one that, that, that breaks down the dividing wall. Oh, building bridges instead of walls. One humanity instead of two. When I looked at that picture and there's the pieces there, I just said, this is so fascinating sometimes that Jesus is the peace, but it's B-I-B-C. Jesus is the peace that helps in the midst of all of this. It helps us to break down those walls. Jesus is the peace that we can step over, that we can step on so that humanity is one instead of two. Because Paul says, we are all citizens and members of the household of God. 
He's talking to Gentile people that thought that they were never going to make it into the kingdom of God because they were not Jewish. And Paul says the furthest thing from the truth. You right now are citizens and members of the household of God. It's interesting because right at the end there, it says, the very last line, it says, in whom we're also built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. God wants us to be built together in a dwelling place for God. So fascinating. Because in the Old Testament, the dwelling place for God, first of all, was the Ark of the Covenant, a tent. Peter on the Mount of Transfiguration says to Jesus, I want to build a tent so that we can stay out here all the time. Tents. The tents of Camp Pendleton. God dwells in these places. And what it says there is, is that we are to be built together in a dwelling place for God. This is not so much for us, but this is a dwelling place for God where all they dwell. Aliens and strangers are brought near. The large tent of God's grace, we are all built together because the dwelling place of God is right here in our heart. Words matter. Our heart matters. What we say and what we do can either bring people into this wonderful tent called love, grace, and peace, or because of what we say and what we do, is they feel like they're an alien and they can never come in. God is the one that is doing this, this dwelling place for God, so that everyone is a citizen and a saint and members of the household of God. And when that happens, they will truly know in their heart that God is dwelling with them, and they will know that God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Amen. Let us sing together our sermon song, We All Are One in Mission.
I invite you to stand as God's people and proclaim our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. <laughs> this morning, as we move into our time of prayer, I just wanted to, um, I really want to have a prayer uh, for refugees, for migrants. Um, when I was looking at this, it's just interesting because there are 32 and a half million refugees right now at this time. And as I looked at that, and I think this is kind of dated, I think there's even more than that. That would be 10% of the population of the United States. And there's camps all over the place. In Bangladesh, there's a camp that has 880,000 people. Uh, Kenya, there's, uh, there's two different camps with 200,000 people. In Syria, there's camps that have 80,000 people. So back in 1975, I tell you, 50,000 people at that time was a great number as we look at it. And as we look around the world today, there's also Israel and Palestine. As I was reading, 85% of the Palestinians in Gaza, 2.4 million people have been displaced. And most of them are presently living in Jordan. Today let us pray for people who are migrants, who are refugees, who are just trying to find a place to live. Let's keep them in our prayers today as we pray for victims of violence and for peace in the world. Stone 
of a firm foundation. Join us together and build us up as a temple of mercy and peace. In your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the creation, cause new trees to be planted. Restrain the melting of polar ice caps. Save land from destruction. Like a shepherd tends her sheep, raise up from among us caretakers of all you have made. In your mercy, hear our prayer. For the leaders of nations and heads of tribes, where peace seems far off, bring it near. Where justice seems fleeting, bring it to light. Where discord seems relentless, bring harmony. In your mercy, hear our prayer. For the health and well-being of family, friends, and neighbors, heal those who are sick, give courage to all those who are struggling with addiction. Teach with your tender care all who, who reach out to you in pain. In your mercy, hear our prayer. For this assembly and for the faith communities represented this week at the ELCA Youth Gathering Nurture, the faith among young people as they encounter new experiences and people. Break down dividing walls and inspire collaboration among people of every age. In your mercy, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving, for those who have died, make us certain that in Christ we are no longer strangers and aliens, but citizens with the saints in the household of God. In your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord God, we thank you that you do have broken down the walls. That we can sit here in this place, and we come from so many different backgrounds, and we have so many different opinions, but you have gathered us together through your Son, Jesus Christ. Help us to continue to break down barriers. Help us to continue to break down walls. Help us to continue to reach out with your love, grace, and peace to everyone in this entire world. In your mercy. Amen. Lord God, we thank you for your presence in and among us. And today we especially pray for members who need you in a special way. And as we hear these names, Lord, if we know these people, help us to get a picture of them. Help us to pray for them personally. We pray for Verlet, Frida, Marion, Harriet, Carol, Dawn, Anne. Connie, Grace, Joanne, Barbara, John and Jan, Pat, Sharon, Lois, Carol, Mike and Pat, Doris, Janet, Danielle, Marty, Barbara, Daryl, Norman, Jared, Dennis, Ginny, Pat, Donna, Janet, and Ingrid. And Lord God, we also live and pray for the three acts of violence, homicides in the city of Desert Hot Springs that affected the middle school where Michelle works and the kids that are there. We pray for Sharon Matthews, that she can get uh, better and able to rejoin us. Pray for Doris that she'll have strength to get in and out of the car and again can join us. And we pray for a cousin and uh, his family as they're going through some very difficult times. Lord God, continue to be with these and others that we mentioned in our hearts at this time. Lord God, we thank you that you surround us with your healing, with your comfort, that you are with these people, that you're with everyone who is suffering at this time. So we pray that you continue to be with them, continue to be with their family members and their caregivers, that they too may know of the hope and the grace and the healing that comes from you. In your mercy. Hear our prayer. And Lord God, we lift up and pray for Virginia Porter, who had her birthday last Sunday. Uh, we thank you for the wonderful time that she had with family last weekend. And we just pray that you'll continue to shine the light of your joy upon her pathway. In your mercy. 
Hear our prayer. Holy God, holy and merciful, into your outstretched arms we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray. Trusting is the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to stand and share God's peace with those around you as much as you're comfortable. <laughs>
together, in the offering prayer, together. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self, and called us to the feast of plenty. God, who has been sold among us, and strengthen us in this meal, make us to be what we are receiving here, your body, by the life of the world. Amen. Here are the invitations of the table. Friends, this is a joyful feast of unity. Christ has gathered his people from around the earth to commune at this table. Across political lines, economic lines, in places of powerfully protected affluence, and even among the poorest of the poor, we share a meal, remembering and celebrating the one who proved shalom possible. And so we come. Come you from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south. Come. Come with your doubts and come with your hopes. Come with your inadequacies and also come with your strengths. Come. For this is a table where all are invited and all are welcome. May the God of salvation be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts to the one who is your peace. We open them to God, who breaks down the walls to keep up. Take heart. God has prepared his table for all people. We sing glad songs of thanksgiving to God, who makes us one. You built a house for us, architect of steadfast love, and called it creation, filling it with all that we needed to live and serve as your children. Yet we took the temptations and seductions sin offered us, using them to build up a shaky foundation of death. When we could no longer read your covenant that you made with us, you sent prophets to spell out each word for us. When our hostility and anger increased, you sent your son Jesus to proclaim peace to us. So with all who are near and those who seem so far away, we lift our voices in joy to you. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after the supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this also for the remembrance of me. And when we gather at the last in that place appointed for us, no longer strangers, but siblings by your steadfast love, we will be woven together in the tapestry called the kingdom, warming our hearts with your glad songs, God and community, holy in one. Amen. Let us now uh, sing together the prayer that Jesus taught us.
These are the gifts of God for the people of God. A reminder that all are welcome at the Lord's table. And I know I can't wait. I know. So follow the directions of the ushers in coming forward to receive uh, the sacrament. And uh, we want to thank Philip and Stella for special music during communion.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer after communion. Let us bless the bread that gives, that gives itself to us with its terrible weight, its finite grace. Let us bless the cup poured out for us with the love that drenches, that makes us a meal. Let us gather around these gifts simply given and deeply blessed. And let us go bearing the bread, carrying the cup, laying the table within a hungry world. Amen. Okay, Jen, you got the announcements. Welcome to all. Everyone here is a member of God's family. We hope you were blessed by the worship this morning. Please join us for refreshments in the fireside room following worship. You are also invited to join the Bible study in the boardroom across the hall from the fireside room. You are invited to bring your refreshments as we study Psalm 89. The 66 year baseball game is this Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. Please check Justin. Please check with Justin this morning for all the final details. This Wednesday, the choir rehearsal is at 10 a.m. here in the sanctuary. The PB and J crew rides again this Wednesday, and you're invited to join the team at 11 a.m. in the pantry room. Check the list or speak with Jim Hassett for more information. The midweek Bible study is this Wednesday at 11 a.m. We will be beginning our new series, No Longer Strangers, and studying the gospel for this coming Sunday. All are welcome. This Wednesday evening, the Bandon Film, Film Festival, week number two, three, is right here in the upper parking lot. We can use all hands possible set up around 7 p.m. and prepare for the premiere night. Well, actually, it's not the premiere night, it's week number two. We also need help in taking down the large screen and other items See other items down and put away. Free popcorn is available as well. Invite your friends and neighbors and take a flyer this morning. Thank you to Diane Harrington for the donation of the altar flowers for this morning. Please check the flower chart in the lobby to sign up for future Sundays. Please take your bulges home with you to mark your calendar for all activities in July, especially the new PBNJ team schedule. The long range plan and breakfast. May you all have a great one this week. And I believe some other announcements at this time as well. So, good morning, everyone. It's good to see you all here today. I'm up here just to remind you that we do have the long range planning gathering for the congregation to give us uh, input and help us prioritize activities on August 3rd at 9 o'clock in the morning, there will be breakfast. There is a sign-up sheet outside on the table just under the um, flower sign-up, which would be the furthest table that way. <laughs> um, so please be sure you sign up. It is imperative that if you are able, you come and help us. We have a lot of things that we receive from you as far as needs for the church. We right now are working on the electrical for the parking lot lights. Unfortunately, we've had some vandalism. Three of our pools don't have wire. Um, and so we're going to have to have those replaced. The other ones are fixed though. Yay. So we have a food movie night. Um, but there's also some additional things that are going on as the, you'll probably be a little warm in the fireside room because the uh, air conditioning is like white looking up to snow and we'll be meeting after church to discuss that. So there are lots of things that we need your help on, and um, so the more of you who could come, I promise it won't be a long meeting that day. Um, it'll be as long as we need to work toward the goals for setting up for this church for the future. So thank you so very much. Okay, uh, a couple other things. First of all, I don't know if you know, but Emily, our acolyte, yay, Emily, yay. Um, she brought her own little cheering section today. <laughs> so Rory and Scarlett are back there, and 
I always say to my sister, if you want to double the attendance of worship, bring one person. Well, she brought two. So guess what? The rest of you, ah, come on. All right. Do we have a movie for Wednesday night? Lilo and Stitch. Lilo and Stitch. Okay, that's the movie. It's hot, and we're going to try to cool things down with a little Hawaiian fun. That's right. Okay, so it'll be wonderful. The other thing is, is um, on the table out there, there are T-shirts again. Is God from our hands? If you want to get a hat, let me know. We can order those too. Um, but in September, I think it's the second Sunday of September, it's God's work our hands. We're going to be putting together school kits. And some people say, well, there's a lot of churches in town that do school kits. I said, no, no, no. Our school kits are going to go elsewhere. I think the kids around us in school, they get this wonderful church to take care of all that stuff. We're going to send it to uh, kids that don't have it around the world. So you'll be hearing more about that. But also, I want people to get a t-shirt. If you don't have one, get a t-shirt because I want to work with a group of people who will do something outside of the church. Oh, that's a nice idea, isn't it, guys? Uh, it might be later on in the afternoon. It could be a morning somewhere around that weekend when it's not so hot. But we're working on maybe a project that we can do. And the wonderful thing would be is if we all show up with our yellow shirts. And if you want a hat, you get a hat, too. Um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But if you want a hat, get a hat, too. Um, anyway, it does work backwards and forwards anyway. Um, and one final thing is, if you came in, you got this wonderful little purple sheet here. Melody wants to sing Children of the Heavenly Father. I, I, I don't know that one. <laughs> I don't know that one. I'm sorry. Um, anyway, um, fill this out because during the month of August, um, we will be singing your favorite songs. I encourage you very strongly to do that either to this Sunday or next Sunday because we need to pick them for the first Sunday of August. And whatever comes in, guess what? Those ones get picked. So don't dawdle, don't worry, but do more. And put it on there, and we'll uh, sing your favorite songs during the month of August. I think that's really it. Okay. Let us uh, finish up with our sending, which is a responsive reading. I just encourage you to stand as we have these sending words. Now go to greet stranger and dear friend equally. We, we share God's steadfast love as we seek to live in faithfulness. Now go to share Christ's compassion with everyone. We will tear down, down the dividing walls and build bridges, bridges of hope. Now go to live as one as the Spirit gathers us, gathers you with others. We will, we will build, build communities, communities that welcome all, especially, especially the outsiders. We send, uh, we finish the way we began this morning with our Sunday song, Oh Praise and Gracious Power, singing verses 5 through 7.
God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.